Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Regrettably, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has hit a new low in sending a warning letter to 23andMe, which is a genetic testing company in the United States, essentially requiring 23andMe to halt sales of its test kits. Now, these test kits are not medicine. They're not medical procedures. There is nothing invasive about them at all. A person pays $99, gets some equipment to take a saliva sample, send it over to 23andMe, and then get a lot of fairly detailed information on 23andMe's website about that person's genetic profile. This is useful information that most people would not be able to obtain anywhere else. It is provided in an inexpensive and convenient fashion, and there is no compulsion involved at all. There are no mandatory consequences or side effects. It is entirely up to an individual to choose what to do with that information. The FDA is alleging that some people will misuse that information if 23andMe shows them to be at an elevated risk of a certain cancer or other ailment, they will rush to get very uh, devastating sometimes treatments performed on them, like the removal of an organ, in the efforts to prevent that disease. Or alternatively, the FDA alleges if 23andMe shows a reduced risk for a particular ailment, then these individuals will not take as much care of themselves as they should to prevent that ailment. But that is not at all a logical requirement of 23andMe service. In fact, virtually any prudent individual would seek the advice of a qualified medical professional before engaging in some life-altering procedure, either uh, removing some sort of organ or having some other costly and inconvenient treatment done, or not taking as good a care of themselves as they should. Indeed, any unusual or alarming result from 23andMe should, in fact, be shown to a medical practitioner, and some advice should be received as to what should be done further. And if some people don't do that, that is not 23andMe's problem. That is their individual problem. And it is quite appalling that those of us who know the limits of information and know how to use it wisely and know how to think for ourselves are being denied the ability to make use of this service just because some people may be stupid or irrational or hasty. Why do these people need to be protected from themselves? And why do we need to be protected from ourselves even when we don't make those kinds of mistakes, solely because some people are stupid or irrational or overly hasty. This is crossing a new line for the Food and Drug Administration. I have had a lot of issues with the FDA's overly stringent process for screening drugs and medical treatments. For instance, I think it is very counterproductive for the FDA to require not just the safety of the treatments being tested, but also their efficacy. As if taking a pill that doesn't really do anything, that may act as a placebo but no more, is genuinely going to harm an individual. The FDA is clearly overstepping its bounds. As a libertarian, I don't think it ought to exist. If it does continue to exist, then I would support any measure to curtail the kinds of limitations that the FDA could impose on life-saving treatments getting out and potentially benefiting patients. But this goes even beyond safety and efficacy, because in this case, looking at one's genetic information is closer to reading a book or accessing content that's clearly protected under the right of free speech and the right of individuals to voluntarily associate with those uh, with whom they would find interactions to be beneficial. This goes beyond safety and efficacy because there's no treatment, there's no procedure whose safety and efficacy are in question. Taking a saliva sample is unambiguously safe. And as for efficacy, well, it depends on what a person does with that information. Again, nobody is forcing anyone to do anything. If you take a pill of some sort, there may be adverse side effects. 
If there is a surgical treatment of some sort, there may be adverse side effects. But using 23andMe does not logically entail doing any of that. So now the Food and Drug Administration is intervening into anything that purports to have any relevance to health care and attempting to foresee possible risks for one's organism. 23andMe could provide a very valuable, indeed life-saving service to some individuals, not because it ought to be relied on completely, it shouldn't, but because it could give people a good idea of where to start looking and where to start asking additional questions and where to start seeing medical professionals and see what they say. And if the FDA is worried that people are getting all sorts of ideas without the input of a qualified medical professional, well, isn't it the responsibility of the medical professionals to give good advice and to identify cases where a person might be inappropriately worried about something or perhaps addressing an issue too carelessly and not looking at the risks of a particular future condition closely enough? That's not the responsibility of 23andMe. And it seems, in fact, that the FDA is acting, at least partly, in a protectionist role. Not a consumer protectionist role, but a protectionist role for existing economic arrangements for the delivery of medical care. If people have to go through a doctor to get even the most basic information about themselves, not just to see if they need a particular treatment or another, but even to find anything out, that is going to, by limiting the supply of the service, raise the price astronomically, as it has done. This is why simple diagnostic tests in the U.S. medical system today can cost hundreds of dollars. It's because the supply is artificially restricted through the prescription system, through various licensing systems for medical professionals, and as a result, even information that you could effectively get by buying some over-the-counter kit and measuring it yourself often is unavailable to you unless you go through the established formal channels of getting a prescription or getting an official physician's recommendation to do a test and that's going to cost you hundreds of dollars, much of which may be absorbed by health insurance if you have health insurance, but if you don't, it will cost it out of pocket. And people wonder, well, why is health care not as accessible as it ought to be? Why are the costs of health care so high in this country? It's because of these artificial limitations. It's because entities like the FDA try to shut down entrepreneurs like Ann Wojcicki of 23andMe, who actually try to do something to solve the problem and increase the supply and render good information available to individuals. Now, with any sort of information, anything about health, nothing should be taken on faith. And I think it is misguided and ultimately extremely counterproductive for people to place a kind of unreserved trust in professionals of any sort. That includes doctors. And I am not suggesting that doctors don't have reasons to warrant their trust. But it's precisely the rational trust that needs to happen. Not trust on blind faith just on the basis of somebody's medical credentials. It's like the old joke goes, what do you call a doctor who graduated at the bottom of his class in medical school? And the answer is MD. And few people know or care about that fact, even though they ought to know and they ought to care. They ought to look at provider reviews. They ought to take anything a doctor says with a bit of questioning, of course, substantial recognition that the doctor has knowledge and expertise and valuable insights to offer, but doctors make mistakes too. So everything, every piece of information, both from the internet from a medical professional, from any other professional, from a friend, from a casual acquaintance, needs to be approached with skepticism and with an active mind that rationally evaluates all of the data. If people don't do that, why should the ones who do suffer for it? Why should they be denied the access to knowledge that could save their lives? That's the problem. The FDA is protecting us from ourselves and protecting existing 
medical arrangements just because stupid people exist. And it is tragic because it may delay, to some extent, the onset of the revolution of personalized medicine. And that is the revolution that is needed for individuals to maintain such a good track of their health that they can actually take enough of a good care of it that they can ward off threats before they occur instead of just going to have expensive medical procedures once something wrong has happened. That would be the solution that not only saves a lot of money within the medical system and enables patients to keep that money, but it would also dramatically improve both health and the length of human lifespans. Thank you very much.